Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a pretty much a synopsis of the Jonathan Robinson uh, Renita Williams murder case. And a new court date has been set for 36-year-old Jonathan Robinson, the man accused of killing a woman on Facebook Live. Robinson is expected to appear in court on May 29th for an arraignment hearing. He was in court today for arraignment, actually, but was expected to plead not guilty for killing 27-year-old Renita Nunu Williams. Instead, the judge granted a request for Robinson to undergo psychological evaluation. That exam is expected to be done before a Caddo Parish grand jury meets to consider formal charges against Robinson. You may remember Williams was killed back in April during an hour-long standoff where Robinson allegedly took her hostage and shot at Shreveport police officers, wounding one. According to police and Williams' family, she and Robinson were at one time a couple, but Williams broke that relationship off. Okay, that's, that's, um, that's news to me as far as her, as far as that's the reason that they weren't together. Um, I wasn't aware of that. Wasn't aware that she had broken it off. In any event, he he had he had obviously moved on. Uh, he was in a different state and uh, with a different woman. So. play at some point. He didn't care nothing about her begging for her life. And he shot her too many times. And look what you shot her with, that big old gun. I thought when you have time to think about that's what you're going to do, that's called that. premeditated murder. That's the family of murder victim Renita Williams after today's court hearing for the so-called Facebook Live killer. They're upset after the attorney of the accused laid out groundwork for an insanity defense in the high-profile case. Jonathan Robinson is suspected of killing Williams in her home on April 12th. He allegedly made the 27-year-old mother of three live stream on Facebook just moments before fatally shooting her and shooting at police officers during that standoff. KSLA Chief Investigative Reporter Stacey Cameron in studio with us now. You were in the courtroom earlier today when this all kind of played out. And I, I gather we went in there thinking this would be a standard arraignment, uh, but then it ended up igniting a lot of anger in the end. Yeah, a lot of anger, dug emotion, upset, angry, tears from the family of Williams, or Anita Williams' family upset, some furious after that hearing because Robinson is going to undergo a psychological evaluation before this case takes the next step forward. Not today in that courtroom here, you can see a picture of Renita Williams. Her suspected killer was in that courtroom, and he was expected to plead not guilty this morning. But instead, Robinson's court-appointed lawyer requested a delay, asking for a psychological evaluation of the man now known as the Facebook Live killer. The judge said okay to that request, with the psych exam expected to be complete before a cattle parish grand jury meets to consider formal charges against Robinson. Now remember, Williams was killed during an hour-long standoff where she was taken hostage and Robinson shot at a Shreveport police officer, wounding one officer. According to police and Williams' family, she and Robinson did have a one-time relationship together, but Williams broke off that relationship sometime before this event happened in Doug and Dom. Family is angry because they think all the actions that led up to this, uh, Robinson driving some four hours from Houston, confronting her in her home, orchestrating the Facebook Live and taking action to shoot against police, showed to them that he's not insane and any thought otherwise is crazy itself. They said. You, you yourself have a legal background, so no better person than to ask you to kind of get a legal end of this. What other expectation could there have been going into court when the whole thing was captured on Facebook? Well, that's it's, it's, as a defense attorney, you're 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 
your choices were pretty limited. His choices were limited to one of two things, and really it's only one, you know, trying to work a plea agreement to keep his client from the gas chamber. And really the only way to do that in this case is establish an insanity defense, right? Because you have most of this playing out on Facebook Live. You have from our own reporting the fact that he admitted to police while in custody and after having his rights read that he pulled the trigger shooting a police officer. So there's not a lot of groundwork for that attorney to work. So you're right, Doug, for us in the legal background, it probably wasn't completely out of left field that he would play this card, the insanity card. It's really the only one he had. The family really expected this to, to be a guilty or not guilty. And the difficulty for them is they explain this insanity defense if it goes forward will drag this case out a lot longer than they want to deal with. Right, Stacey Cameron, Stacey. thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I just kind of noticed it seemed like that lady in the middle. I don't know, somebody said could barely contain herself. I believe, um, um, you know, there's a lot that she really wanted to say, but as a reporter, she couldn't say it. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to chime in here. Um, let's see. The family is really angry. I don't, I don't get that part of it. As a as a defendant, and uh, you know, having legal representation, that is that is his right to have that um, psychological evaluation. I personally believe that um, that he was temporarily insane. Um, apparently, that's the only angle that's really available to him and uh, so whoever is representing him if they don't explore that angle they aren't doing their job so um, I don't really get why the family is so upset because the attorney is doing their job uh, I don't really get that part of it uh, it just seems like there's a lot of um, from that family. I mean, they just seem really enraged. Um, maybe, maybe they need to realize that it's not like he's just going to be locked up tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. I mean, depending on how, on each step of the process, I mean, th this could drag on for a while. So, uh, I don't really get why, you know, they feel like he's not entitled to due process um, and actually that is why there's a legal system to guarantee due process it's not it's not based on what the victim's family feels or wants or gets mad about uh, or whatever I mean you know they can't change the fact that he is entitled to legal representation so Maybe they need to just kind of go ahead and get used to that now. Uh, otherwise, they're going to be enraged every time they go to court or every time they, you know, watch uh, anything on the news about this case. Uh, what was the other thing I want to touch on? I think the other thing I want to touch on was... Uh, I just want to say this, uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, go backwards. I think we all know what happened to Renita Williams. I'm not going to, you know, go backwards with this at all. I'm just going to go forward. And my focus will be Jonathan Robinson going forward with this, with this case. Here's a little bit about his criminal history. He does have a lengthy rap sheet. Oh, one thing I do want to say is this. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he first uh, started getting in trouble with the law in 2000. And from what I saw, between 2004 and 2014, that's 10 years, 
um, he wasn't in any legal trouble at all. He wasn't, you know, arrested or or anything. So that's a good ten years. So to me, that shows that he was trying to turn his life around. It seems like to me his his problems didn't really start until 2014 uh, with. Uh, I think it was an armed robbery charge, I believe. And uh, I think from there, there were drug charges. And then he got caught up with this first lady in 2015. That's when he got those uh, charges with her. And it just seems like uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Those were just uh, very active years for him. He was, in, he was in the legal system quite a bit with that during those years. I'm not sure at what point he met Renita Williams, but um, I believe his problems started around two, uh, 2015. And it seems like it, they may have really kind of started escalating when he got, in, got involved with that. Uh, I don't think they ever mentioned her name, but there was a black woman that he got in charge, got involved with before Renita Williams. And, uh, and uh, in the event that Renita Williams did end the relationship, obviously Jonathan Robinson had moved on. Yeah, this is what I was going to touch on. Obviously he had moved on. He's in another state with another woman living another life. So... I don't get why she's on, on on Facebook doing live videos or whatever about him. I mean, to me, you only do that if you know eventually it's going to get back to the to the person in the other state. I mean, when you go, you know, on the internet and broadcast live like that. Um, it's just different than, you know, just sitting around with your girlfriend saying whatever. So, to me, that was, um, that was a bit, um, vindictive, it seems to me, to actually do that. Uh, I also believe that prior to her doing that, and at the time that they were dealing with each other, I believe a lot transpired in that relationship between the, him and him and her. I believe a lot went down with that. Um, I believe that she may have had something on him. I believe that she may have threatened to report him or whatever. I mean, he has this all of this criminal history. I'm sure at some point he was on probation or something like that. I just got a feeling that she had something on him. And uh, and then also, I just think he was threatened by her. You know, she, I believe she threatened to um, say or do something that would, um, you know, threaten his freedom. I also believe that there was mental, uh, intim uh, mental intimidation. I believe that there was uh, psychological, uh, you know, abuse just from dealing with dealing with her. Uh, I, I just believe that there was like some type of mental uh, abuse that just pretty much just, you know, gradually, you know, layer after layer after layer after layer. You know, I just, I, I, I always thought when I saw this case, there's more to this case. I mean, there is more to this case Nobody just just does that because somebody goes and does a uh, does a Facebook live. There is more to this case. We won't we we may never know all all of the details to this case, but I know within my heart there is more to this case. Uh, and I also want to say that with him, um, I think it's kind of wild that they're charging him with attempted murder seven different times for shooting at the police officers when actually only one police officer got injured and he got shot in the wrist. That's not a serious injury. 
So, um, I don't know. There's something about these, about all these charges I'm not comfortable with, you know. Um, at the end of the day, he didn't kill not one officer. And only one officer was wounded, and it was a minor wound. Uh, the only person that lost their life was Renita Williams. And I personally believe that there's believe that there's more to that than 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 that it, than is in the news. I believe that there's more uh, to that relationship. Uh, I believe they were probably dealing for at least two years. I guess on the news they're saying it was a one-time relationship or whatever. It may have been. I don't know if they both were doing drugs and you know. Uh, involved in drugs together or what, but there is more to that relationship, and there is there's there's something going that went on or is going on in the background of that relationship that has not come out, and I believe that's what drove him to. Um, um, I can't even rem remember what I had I had called it, uh, temporary insanity. That's really not what, what I was looking for, though. I was looking for, um, anyway, I guess the uncontrollable, uncontrollable something. Okay, so let's take a look at this criminal history here, if this will play. One hour air conditioning and heating knows how uncomfortable yeah. it gets when... We all gotta watch that. I'm gonna just chime in until it, until it starts. Um, but yeah, I, I I believe there was some type of abuse in that relationship. We're following new information tonight in yesterday's deadly shooting that killed a woman and wounded a Shreveport police officer. Police Chief Alan Crump called a morning news conference to share the latest information about the standoff in Shreveport's Caddo Heights neighborhood. Police identified the alleged gunman as 36-year-old Jonathan Robinson. He's now charged with second-degree murder in the shooting death of Renita Williams. Police also addressed a live stream clip on Facebook during the deadly standoff. I could tell the females that love doesn't hurt. And in situations like this, it's really not love. It should be shaking and awakening for our community that we have work to do. Right now, Louisiana is third in the nation of domestic violence fatalities. For more information on Project Celebration and other resources for domestic violence victims, just call the number right there on your screen, 318-256-6242. Again, 256 6 Two, four, two. Well, since all of this happened, we've been digging deeper into the criminal past of the suspect, Jonathan Robinson. Our chief investigative reporter, Stacey Cameron, shows us what he's uncovered. In an ongoing murder investigation, we may try uh, to answer as uh, uh, many questions as we can. Where the suspect, Jonathan Robinson, is already in custody after allegedly killing Renita Williams and wounding the Shreveport police officer. He's in jail for a murder. Second degree murder and convicted felon in possession of a firearm. KSLA investigates is learning more about 36-year-old Jonathan Robinson, a man who, according to court documents, has a long arrest record. KSLA uncovered documents showing police taking Robinson into custody 12 times over the past 19 years. And despite a growing rap sheet, these papers show him serving very little time in prison. For example, Robinson was twice arrested for murder, a first degree murder charge in 2000 that was dismissed and a second degree murder charge in 2005. In that case, Robinson pleaded guilty to aggravated second-degree battery and sentenced to seven years hard labor. This happening to a lot of people come and go since I first started. While Paul Carmouche served as Caddo Parish District Attorney. Oh, gotcha, oh, gotcha. During Charles Scott's time as DA, 
Robinson was arrested twice on drug charges. And since James Stewart took over the DA's office, it's a lot different than what we do. Robinson has been arrested three more times. In this 2015 case, where Robinson was accused of domestic abuse, false imprisonment, simple battery, and resisting arrest, police records state that Robinson ran the female victim off the road in a car, hit her in the face, then used the woman as a shield when police tried arresting him. He pleaded guilty to two counts of domestic abuse battery in that case back in 2016, getting a year in prison, but that sentence was suspended with probation. Now. Just 16 months later, Robinson is back here behind bars in Cattle Parish. Here, I have a warrant from Robinson's last running with the law before yesterday's tragic murder in Cattle Heights. This is from June 2016. It shows Robinson being charged with armed robbery, and according to documents, he robbed a man in a car and had an SK-47 in his possession. Like so many criminal cases against Robinson, the charges in this one were dismissed as well by prosecutors. I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Stacey Cannon. And today's news conference interrupted part of the Young and the Restless earlier this morning. Okay, now it's not, um, it is not Jonathan's fault that, that uh, those other cases were never prosecuted. Um, you know, that's for the state of, Lu state of Louisiana to, you know, to work, work all of that out. But, um, you know, if no one prosecutes you, I mean, that's on them. That's not on Jonathan Robinson. Now that that um, that armed robbery that they that he just mentioned, um, ten years prior to that, he was he didn't get in, he didn't get into any trouble. So I don't know. I, I guess he maybe had ran into some financial problems or something. But uh, I do know he was involved in, in drugs. I know that for a fact. I have an article here about that. Uh, it says, neighbors assist in cattle parish drug dealer bust. Uh, it says, authorities said neighbors helped put the drug dealers behind bars. It doesn't have a year on this article that I can see, so I'm not sure. But uh, it says, in the 1700 block of Looney Street, Johnny Robinson, which that's Jonathan Robinson's younger brother. There's like a year difference between those two. 31, his brother Jonathan Robinson, 32, and Germany Smith, 27 were arrested and charged with possession with intent to distribute cocaine. Agents said they found 39 grams of cocaine, $3,800, and a handgun in a pit bull kennel. Local evangelist Joseph Johnson said he won't stand for it on his street. I think it's overdue. It should have been done in the past, but it's always a season for everything. Sometimes it may be somebody that's not even on our radar that we are unaware of, said uh, Lieutenant Carl Townley. Citizens' tips have led to big federal busts. On July 25th, uh, I guess these are some other ones here. I think that's the only mention of Jonathan Lewis. Yeah, only mentioning the mothers. Okay, so yeah, he was, there was, uh, you know, firearm, this, this looks like marijuana. I'm not sure what these, probably some kind of pills or something. I can't think of those pain pills that they sell. I mean, I don't use any of that stuff anyway. Um, but uh, I can't even think of it. Yeah, this looks like a, I don't know if this is a, a scale, it looks like a scale. I don't know what these are. No, these are handguns, it looks like. I know, at least this, look, this looks like a handgun. Um, I'm going to 
assuming that's what these are also. Uh, but yeah, so that's what they found. But you know, people go down for drugs every day, so I mean, to me, it's not really, you know, some big shocking surprise. I mean, people get arrested for drugs every day. <laughs>